Today on the channel, I'm going to show you how to play four ACDC licks that you got to learn. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at four really cool ACDC licks that I think you should learn how to play. We're going to start this lesson off with For Those About to Rock, We Salute You. And it's an E. We're tuned to standard. So let's take a gander at this thing and get a little bit closer look. So I'm going to start you off with the chord shapes first. This introduction, there's two guitar parts. So guitar number one which is probably Angus, obviously. We're gonna, we're gonna show that part first. We're gonna take, uh, the song starts on a B major chord. So if we take our D shape like this, a D, a D major, and we slide it way up here on the 11th fret, that's a B major, those top three strings. Now I'm gonna flip these fingers around just to make it easier when we, we do this little uh, lick because it makes it a little bit easier. So it's the same chord. So the first chord is going to be a D major, or a B major, in this D shape, right? Then we're going to slide our pointer finger down to the 10th fret. It's going to be a B minor. And then we're going to take our pinky, and we're going to put it up here on the 14th fret. And that's, that's just the same thing. It's a B major chord, but that's got the fifth on top. So it's a B major. And then we're going to bring this pinky down to the 12th fret and that's a B suspended four chord. So the four chords are and then it repeats those chord shapes. Now what I'm doing is I'm playing it with these these three fingers, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ring finger underneath the high E string, and I'm gonna take my middle finger under the B string, and I'm gonna take my pointer finger under the G string, okay? So I can play this chord with all three fingers like this. And it gives it that punchy sound. All three strings are being uh, struck at the same time. Kind of like a piano. And then Angus. The harder, Angus pulls on these strings. accents if you hear what I'm doing there so that's how that riff is played okay so it's it's kind of got a three feel. One two three. 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 One two. One two three. One two three. One two three. One two three. One. Okay, so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. There's a couple twos in there, but mostly threes. So. So you got to work on these three fingers, plucking these three strings. And I've got my hand, my palm, on the rest of the guitar, so I'm uh, on the strings. So I'm resting it. So these these other three strings, they they can't make any noise. So you got to mute those. And the tone that Angus uses is kind of a a brittle Marshall tone. So it's, there's not a lot of gain to it. You may want to roll back a little bit on your volume if you've got a little bit too much distortion. So when the song kicks in, you can really turn up the volume and get a little bit more gain. So I'm going to roll back just a little bit and, and we just... Okay, so then the Malcolm part, right? Malcolm, uh, he does two things in this beginning. After Angus comes in with that, 
that beginning by himself. Eventually, Malcolm comes in with his B power chord. Then he goes. So what I did there was a G. And I'm gonna play the F sharp. It's an F sharp, basically it's a D chord with an F sharp on the bass down to a low E. So that goes. Okay. And then when the drums kick in, he adds an A in there, so it goes. That's the cool thing about ACDC. They were a simplistic band, but their parts. Angus and Malcolm played awesome parts off of each other. And, and you can definitely, um, you can hear how these two worked off each other very well with their tonalities and the way that they, they, they orchestrated these songs in a great way that just translated great for rock and roll. I love a lot of the early Def Leppard records because I feel like the guitars in the early Def Leppard records were very much like ACDC. So maybe that has something to do with Mutt Lang. Mutt Lang produced some of the ACDC stuff and he produced Def Leppard. So maybe there was some influence there. And all the while we have Angus. Cool. All right, so there's lick number one, or riff number one, for those about to rock. So let's go to something a little bit easier. We're going to play Highway to Hell. Highway to Hell is super easy, but uh, there's a little bit, of, uh, little bit of technique in there that you got to get to get it to sound right. So Highway to Hell is in A. Okay, and then you got to learn this chord, which, let me show you how I'm playing this. This is the D again with the F sharp on the bass, and then the G. So Angus is playing, uh, he's avoiding major thirds, which means when you're playing this A chord, you're not going to play this. You're not going to have a nice chimey major chord. You're just going to play these bottom three notes. And then we're going to play the F sharp uh, over the D major. So what I did there is um, I got my middle finger on the F sharp and my pinky and my uh, middle finger on the A string on the or on the A note on the G string. So it's on the second fret G string and this is on the third fret on the B. And we strum that three times. And then we just go up to the G. So we're just move, we're taking the, the uh, ring finger off and we're moving the, the middle finger up to the G. So it goes. So he goes back down to that F sharp over the D today when he ends that lick. So slowly it's up to speed. One, two, three. Now you got to feel that uh, it comes in. It doesn't come right in on the one. Check it out. One, two, three. I messed it up. <laughs> so um, I always want to play uh, the best of both worlds, which is <laughs> when I play that song. It always reminds me of School of Rock also when I go. <laughs> what is it? Who is it? Jack Black that did that and he starts dancing around so crazy. Hilarious movie. One of the funniest scenes. Alright, so there's Highway to Hell. And I'm muting, uh, I will say before we end this particular riff, 
I'm palm muting over the strings in between those chords because you got to have that silence, right? So it goes. I palm mute. I'm muted. So you got to get used to muting these strings when you're not playing them. You don't want to be like real sloppy like that. It's tight. That's what she said. Cool. All right, so let's do Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, okay? So we're in E, and the riff goes like this. Okay, so what we're doing is we're E, we're G, we're A, and we've got a D chord. So power chord E, power chord G, power chord A, and a power chord D in this song. And then we're gonna also have this power chord E. So Malcolm and Ang Angus doubled a lot of this stuff. So sometimes when somebody's up here going, the other guy's down here going, okay, so. You can pick and choose what you want to do. If you're a one guitar player band, just use your ears and play whatever part suits the song the best. If you're a double guitar player, play different, different chord voicings, right? Spread it out, make it sound cool. So the song starts with low E and then G. And I palm muted between that change. I went. Now I'm not playing the, the, the root note on that. You can, you can go. But it sounds better to me if you take your ring finger and your pinky and you just play on the fifth fret on the A and the D string and mute this low E string with your thumb so you can't hear it. And then the same thing up on this A, instead of playing the A like that, I'm doing the, the ring finger and the pinky on the seventh fret. Gives a little bit more punch, I think. Now what I did there was the D, not an A, but a D, back to an E. So slowly. And I go D to E. Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Now let's play Shake a Leg off of Back in Black. This song's an E. <laughs> a lot of these songs sound the same, but they're different. It's like, how, does, how, do, how do guitar players come up with so many cool riffs? I mean, it doesn't seem possible, right? I'm lucky if I come up with one every six months, <laughs> if that. All right, so Shake a Leg starts off with the drums and the bass and the guitar. So he's basically going E, then A, E. So you gotta listen to the record, you know, when you hear those punches come in. Sounds kinda like Dirty Deeds, right? <laughs> but it's not, so. Kicking everything with his feet, with his feet, yeah. And then when he, uh, when the song breaks. Don't drink it now, don't sleep on fire, shake a leg, shake a leg, right? So it goes. So this is the lick I want to show you. So after we do the E and A E thing, he goes. We're going to go E and take our middle finger and just play that G. And we're going to bend it up ever so slightly. It's not quite a G sharp. It's not quite a G. It's bluesy. You know, it's like... And it's fast. So we're doing that. 
and then you go, which is a G and a B on the on the A string on the second fret. Then we're going up to an A, and we're going to do this, which is we're going up to the B. So it's G, the G chord, then the A, which is the seven and the fifth, seven on the e, low E and the fifth on the A. And the, the amount of notes we hit on this is like that. Slowly. I think there's a section of the song where he goes to A. He does the same thing on the A, I want to say he does, and then back to E. Now one thing you'll see me doing a lot is I'm going, I add vibrato. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my pointer finger and I just add a little bit of vibrato. So I'm going, I don't know if, if Angus does that so much, but I like to do it. I think it adds a little bit more personality to the notes. And Angus really does this a lot with his solos. You'll hear him play solos and be like. Every guitar player has their own distinct vibrato. When you establish your tone and your sound and you've been playing for a while, you'll, you'll eventually get your voice. And vibrato is a key element to getting your tone and your voice that sounds like you. It, it's your own personal, your own personal uh, flair that you play with and it's very identifiable. I think the one thing that you can really identify players with these days is their vibrato. When you hear that, those people playing those riffs, it's not just the song and the riff, but it's the way that they attack those notes and very much it's the way they bend. You know, Steve Vai's got his own specific vibrato that kind of goes in circles. And, you know, Ingve's got that really wild, you know, like, I can't even do it. He's got this really singing vibrato. Zach Wilde's got a, a vibrato wider than the Rio Grande. <laughs> so, uh, vibrato is very important. Clapton, man, Clapton's got that signature vibrato. So yeah, shake a leg. So there you go, four really cool ACDC licks that I think you should learn and will help your playing. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. And as always, have a great day. Peace out.